Hello everybody. Welcome back to the fourth module of the Food Packaging Technology course. In the last few weeks, you have been studying about the different packaging materials, the way it is formed, the tests that are performed. This week, we'll be continuing with another new topic, which is on packaging accessories and the advances in packaging technologies. The topics under this week will be packaging accessories and advances in packaging technologies like active packaging, modified atmospheric packaging, aseptic packaging, and biodegradable plastics and edible coatings. So these are some of the new topics that are very different from the other modules that have been already covered. Let's start with packaging accessories. A recap into your previous module. We talked about the different types of packages, primary, secondary, tertiary. And today I'll introduce a new word, which is ancillary packaging. Under primary, we talked about the packages that are in direct contact with the food, like your laminated pouches, your tin cans, cling films, shrink wraps, anything that comes in contact with the food. Coming to secondary, it was the outer covering of the primary package, which were your plastic crates, plastic trays, wooden crates, etc. And the third one, which is the tertiary, is actually used for your shipment. And that includes the corrugated fiber boats, your plastic pellets, wooden crates, etc. Now, what are these ancillary packaging materials? If you look at the examples under these, they're adhesives, printing inks, polypropylene straps, tapes, labels, and cushioning materials. So what can these be? These are actually essential commodities in the packaging industry, which actually helps to efficiently and securely store your products. It helps to organize and customize the products in the packaging material. So your ancillary compounds enhance the properties of the initial material. In food packaging, all the ancillary materials, it actually should receive clearance from the Food Regulatory Authority. For example, your printing ink. You should have it in such a way that there will be no migration from the package into the food. There should not be any unnecessary migration of the ink. So it should adhere to the food safety rules that are existing. We'll start with adhesives, which is an important ancillary material. Adhesives are chemical compounds that join two materials of objects together. So what are their functions? They're needed for forming and sealing corrugated cases and folding cartons. Number two, they're needed for winding of tubes in your cores and composite cans. Needed for labeling in your bottles, your jars, your packages. Needed for lamination. Y'all should have already studied by now that lamination are a combination or joining together of different packaging material. And for this lamination process, you will require your adhesives. Now, this addition is a process of bonding these two material surfaces together. And the surface are usually referred to as adherence. So an adhesive is any substance which is applied as a thin layer between two adherents that bonds them together. And this addition is because of an intimate intermolecular contact between the two materials. Okay, there's usually a force between the two surfaces. And the most common surface forces that are involved are your Van der Waals forces. In addition, you'll have your acid-base interaction and hydrogen bonds. So these bonds actually help to adhere or join these two objects together. Addition itself are of two types. You have mechanical addition and you have chemical addition. Now mechanical addition, if you have two porous materials and they can be bonded together by the adhesive entering into the pores and giving a mechanical structure, for example, paper to paper. So the porosity is very important to determine the degree of penetration into the surface. So too little or too much porosity will affect the bonding. So generally materials like paper is coated so that they can control the penetration of the adhesive into the surface. The second type is the chemical addition. In chemical addition, there's a chemical bond that is formed between the adherent and the adhesive. So many adhesives are strongly polar. You have strongly polar adhesives like your starch, PVA, casein. And paper is a polar adherent, whereas your plastics like your LDP, PP, glass, 
they are non-polar adherents. So many adhesives they work in both mechanisms. You have mechanical as well as chemical addition that is working in most of the adhesives. Now there's two terms that is shown in the screen here. One is wetting and one is stack. Wetting is the process of establishing an intimate contact between the adhesive and the adherent. So wetting is very important. You should bring it them in close contact. And to be for an effective wetting, the surface number one, it should be clean. And number two, the surface tension of the solvent that is used should be in such a way that wetting is possible. So sometimes they do add wetting agents to bring these two materials together also. And the term tack is actually the ability to form a bond of measurable strength immediately. Basically, it is the stickiness of your adhesive. So if your tack is more, the adhesive is better sticky or it can bring the materials together in a better manner. So tack is the property of the adhesive and it allows to adhere to another surface. That's what I said, it is the stickiness of the adhesive. So we talked about two types of addition, your chemical and your mechanical. Now we're going to talk about two types of adhesives itself. Adhesives itself can be divided as a waterborne or solvent based adhesive. Waterborne adhesives are the oldest and still the largest class of adhesives that are used. Very commonly used. So they are slow drying compared to your solvent based. Okay, they require three times more heat and more time also in order to dry up completely. Another problem is waterborne adhesives, they generally do not provide the shear or the peel strength that the solvent base will provide. And they do not have a moisture resistance once it is dry. That is a problem. But waterborne adhesives are still has its own advantage. They can withstand high temperature ranges and they're easy and safe to handle and of low cost, which is a big advantage. Now in addition, there is something called pressure sensitive adhesive. Now that is understandable. These pressure sensitive adhesive, they actually bring surfaces together when you apply a light pressure. So there's no chemical interaction going on here between the substrate and the adhesive. There is no curing of substrate that is required. Intimate contact between the substrate and the adhesive is what is required. And if you give a slight pressure, the surface will be joined to the adhesive. Now coming here in this slide, I've shown you all the different types of adhesive in terms of whether it's natural or synthetic. You've got a number of natural adhesives that are there. Starch is a natural adhesive. Proteins are used as additives. Certain natural rubber latex are used as a natural adhesive. What are examples? Like starch is used generally for your corrugated fiber board. CFB is a corrugated fiber board. If you want to join them together, generally they can use starch for sealing cartons winding spiral tubes, forming bags, labeling metal cans. Protein, you generally use casein or you can have animal glue. Animal glue is usually made from collagen. Collagen is and gelatin. Gelatin, collagen is the most abundant protein that is formed in the human and animal sources. And these can be made into glue. And you can actually be using that to make rigid setup boxes. Natural rubber latex is another naturally formed adhesive. It forms bonds with pressure that you use in your self-sealed candy wraps. Similarly, you have synthetic adhesives. Synthetic adhesives are waterborne adhesives. You've got hot melt adhesives, solvent-based adhesives, and pressure-sensitive adhesives. So what are these waterborne adhesives? They are resin emulsions, generally of PVA or EVA, and it's used to form, seal and label cartons, tubes and bags. Hot melt, as the term suggests, you need to give some kind of heat. So there, usually these additives are thermoplastics. They can be melted and reformed, melted, reformed again and again. And the bond forms when the additive resolidifies. Solvent-based additives are usually, they use organic solvents are used, but Generally, these have got less application in the food industry. Last one is the pressure sensitive additives. They are bonds that form instantaneously on light pressure. There is no solvent, no water or heat required. This in general are these different kinds of additives that are used as an ancillary packaging. The second type of ancillary packaging is your printing inks. Printing inks are indispensable today in your labels, and there are various kinds of printing inks and varnishes that you use in the food packaging. And these printing inks are usually a mixture of a number of substances. 
You have color, you have binders there, you have solvents and additives including plasticizers. And together with other colored or non-colored overprint varnishes, they are applied to the material to form graphics or decorative design. And this is very important because all of us know that any package has to be attractive in order to woo your consumers. And there the printing in very important role. The choice of the ink depends on the printing methods. Now in food packaging, you have generally have four different types of printing technologies that we will be studying in the next module. Uh, we will be going into the details there. But the, usually the four different types of printing technologies used in food packaging are offset, flexography, grave printing, and inkjet printing. So depending on the technology, the choice of the ink will vary. And it's usually applied on the non-food contact surface. That is important. Or it is between one of the outer layers. Why? Because you want to reduce the migration of the inks as far as possible. So in that case, they will try to keep it as far away from the food as possible. So we talked about your adhesives. We talked about the printing inks. And the third ancillary material is labels. Labels, as we know, has got a number of functions in a food package. Number one function is communication function. And it informs the consumer about the nutrition content of the product, the net weight, the product use, the brand, anything. Everything is conveyed through the labels. It acts as a silent salesman through distinctive branding. It helps in identification through a universal product code. You all know you can on the labels, you will know what kind of product it is for your barcodes. As you all know, most of your labels are paper-based, but though there are metal and plastic based also coming up while almost all your paper packages or your, even your metal and plastics are pre-printed it is indispensable to use labels in glass and metal packages so that is where labels are still an important part of the packaging industry what are the different types of labels you have glued on labels which as the name suggests you will have a printed sheet where the adhesive is attached to the non-contact area and it is attached to the packaging material. It's used for large volume substances like your beer, soft drinks, wines, canned foods, where high speed application is required. Second one is self-adhesive labels. Self-adhesive is again pressure sensitive, which you all use book covering and things like that. It's made from paper, plastics, and it's laminated usually to paper or plastics. And it can be used to adhere to a wide range of materials. Now here what they do is these pre-adhesive applied labels, they will be mounted on a release paper. So as and when required, they're released and they're added to the food package. It's called a self-adhesive label. Third one is interesting, which is called in-mold labels. These are applied to the containers during the formation of the container, during thermoforming, during your injection molding. They are attached to the packaging at that time itself. So in contrast to your glue applied labels, these are very different. Glue applied labels are on the surface of the object, while in mold labels are in the walls of the object, but it's of higher cost. Fourth one is a sleeve label. Sleeve labeling is like a shrink labeling where they will penetrate into the geometric or the design of the package. The pre-formed, pre-printed sleeves are they are put onto your containers and then they're shrunk either by in a heat or some other means, they're shrunk to get the shape of the product. You can see that in this picture here, there's a picture of a self-adhesive label compared to a sleeve label. In a self-adhesive label, you glue it onto your glass or bottle. But in a sleeve label, you put it onto your package and this is then taken to a heat tunnel. So it can be covering the package, or for tamper proofing, it can be only over the caps. Or if you want to contain two or three, it can be multi pack or it can be partial. So, this is what a shrink sleeve label is. And this picture also shows you an application of a shrink sleeve where you'll print it, pre printed ones, a slit. It's covering the bottle here. And again, heat shrunk to get the shape of the bottle. And the last type of label is called a holographic label. A holographic label is so-called because it includes a hologram into the label. Okay, so this is very important in order for branding. And this is very important for authentication. Diffractive optical variable devices 
they will give you complex images when you tilt your uh, label so that helps to know the authenticity of the product you do have a number of duplicate products that are coming in market and the holographic label helps you to identify the authentic ones coming to the next ancillary packaging material it is a pp strap a pp as you all know stands for polypropylene strands you all should have seen these straps that are used to you know tie bundle uh, your goods so this strapping is usually done in the warehouse during the shipping process and they require specialized hardware which allows the strap to bind the good and keep it securely in place another very important ancillary packaging material so by now you all will understand that ancillary means helping you know helping in the overall packaging another ancillary package is tapes now tapes can be both are used as a packaging as well as a packaging customization material they come in different material size color and they have different advantages now generally they use plastic tapes they used in the packaging industry in gift wrapping but they also use paper tapes but they are less used than your plastic tapes now these tapes depending on the way in which it is applied onto your surface it can be of different types you can have an edge taping which is very clear from the picture here where you will have it on the two sides and in the middle in the form of an H or you can have C taping from one end to another so it looks like a C so this is another ancillary packaging this is just an additional information show you the styles in which the tapes are usually applied on your packages another very important ancillary packaging material is your caps and closures indispensable in your food packaging because this allows you to close your open jars and bottles it can be made of tin aluminium or plastic you see that in all your household uh, goods you will see them in all your food bottles and beverages okay there is indispensable part it makes it easy to dispense the product it provides child safety and it improves the shelf life of the product you cannot keep a product open and expect it to stay for a long time another word that we already mentioned was hermetically sealed so when you close everything properly without ingress of gas you're making sure the microorganisms also do not enter into your package you must have seen these different types of caps that are used in the industry crown caps as you see in most of your beverage bottles which you need a cock to open you have screw caps where you screw it on to your bottles or your jars r o p p it's called roll on pilfer proof packages another one that is used in many of your beverage bottles medicine bottles and the lug cap that you usually use for your pickles and jam bottle which have the slits so that they can be opened at the same time all of these provide a tamper proof mechanism for your food package you might have also seen something called wads under these caps what are these wads these are usually made of corks paper board and pvc or paper board and p and these white color soft cushioning material under your seal it helps to prevent an interaction between your cap and your foot number 1 number 2 it helps to prevent leaks so wads are an important part of your caps and closures which is again an ancillary packaging material coming to the last one which is the cushioning materials this is another indispensable especially for shipping to a large distance and on rough roads so these are soft materials which protect fragile items during the shipment that is the one that absorbs the impact on the roads on the rails and reduces the chance of a damaged product another thing is it makes the packaging more aesthetically appealing the material is based on the weather resilience resistance to shock and vibration so if your package is more sensitive depending on that you choose your cushioning materials now you have familiar with some of these cushioning materials that are generally used in the food packaging industry not only the food packaging almost all the consumer goods where you will need to transport over long distance you have the bubble wraps cushioning material air pockets which is larger than your bubble packs but at the same time provides a cushioning to the fragile material you have molded polystyrene polystyrene which can take up the shape and especially protect the edges of your product the last one is your crinkle pack paper or your packing peanut this actually fills in the space so the product doesn't move too much in your tertiary packaging material and does not get damaged so we have now gone through all the ancillary packaging material 
which is again a very important part of your packaging which is just like your primary secondary and tertiary packaging material i hope you have understood these different uh, ancillary packages and how important these are in the packaging of foods in the next class this week we'll move on to different advances in food packaging technology which again is quite different from what we have done till now so i hope to see you all in the next class till then take care thank you